This is a short film about Israel and how it has become the leading nation for veganism, the fastest growing social justice movement in the world. Since 2013, it is estimated that between 8 to 15% of the population are vegan or vegetarian, with a further 13% saying they're transitioning to a vegan lifestyle. And to understand the reasons for this trend, you have to look back to 2012. A group named Life 269 was formed in Israel, who employed controversial activism, such as branding themselves live and leaving decapitated bodies in public places. At the same time in the country, Gary Yurovsky, an American animal rights activist, started touring the country, where he became very popular and his lecture titled The Best Speech You'll Ever Hear went viral. It's amazing what's going on here. People are listening to the speech. Uh, it's the most viewed speech in the history of Israel, which is pretty amazing considering yeah. what's been going on here for the last 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that people who have been oppressed certainly understand oppression more than others. So I think that's why Israelis are really taking to this message of animal liberation. Yurovsky is of Jewish descent, along with other prominent animal rights activists who are also Holocaust survivors or descendants of survivors. But according to Harvard psychologist Dr. Melanie Joy, it is Yurovsky's authenticity, passion and down-to-earth style of communication that makes him so popular in Israel. From Yurovsky's activism sprung another event, which also brought the movement into the mainstream. Prominent vegan Tal Gabal appeared in the 2014 season of Big Brother, the most watched entertainment show in Israel. Not only did she win, but the runner-up was also vegan, and it was revealed that 49% of viewers subsequently changed their minds about the lifestyle. Since then, live video cameras have been installed in slaughterhouses, thousands of restaurants have completely transitioned their menus, and dozens of butchers have closed down. Israel's success with the movement is further backed by the fact it has banned circuses, dissections of animals in schools, and the production of foie gras. Huge demonstrations have taken place, including the largest ever animal rights parade in history. Even Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu outspokenly stated that he recognises more and more the plight and suffering of animals. But perhaps the most significant development has been with the Israeli Armed Forces. They now offer soldiers an extensive range of vegan food on their daily menu. More groundbreaking than that is the fact the Defence Forces are now providing soldiers with vegan clothing. However, Critics argue that the vegan movement in Israel has been seen in a darker light. Certain groups have claimed that publicity for the movement takes away from the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine, where it is alleged Israel have committed human rights atrocities. More than 150 people killed in Israel's war in Gaza so far. It's unclear why Israel might have targeted this shelter for people with disabilities. People running for their lives in Tel Aviv tonight. When Gary Yurovsky was asked about the conflict during his visit to Israel in 2013, he responded, I don't care about Jews or Palestinians or their stupid childish battle over a piece of God-forsaken land in the desert. I care about animals. Although blunt, Gary poses the question of whether there is an ethical or even practical basis for prioritising human rights over animal rights. We can find peace on this planet by eradicating speciesism. Because this is the first form of hatred humans are taught. Racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, heterosexism, these are branches of hatred. The root is speciesism because that's the first form of hatred humans are taught. If you want to get rid of the human suffering, get rid of the animal suffering because we've been trying to get rid of human suffering for thousands of years. No success, not even close. So how about we stop the old pattern and do something new? Get rid of the old, try something different. Try putting peace into your body 
instead of death and discrimination and torture and violence. If we look back in time, we can see that Yurovsky is only echoing previous voices. One of the greatest authors of all time, for example, said that as long as we have slaughterhouses, we'll have battlefields. One of the greatest philosophers of all time said that as long as men shed the blood of innocence, they will murder each other. One of the greatest Nobel Prize winners said in relation to animals, all men are Nazis. But at the core of this criticism is the comparison between humanity's treatment of animals and other atrocities, like slavery and the Holocaust. Have blacks, Jews, women and children been the only victims of this atrocity? What is your definition of a Holocaust? Is it a massacre of human beings? or a massacre of innocent beings. And they must look at us like we are devils. We cut things off their bodies, their horns, while they're fully conscious, off the cows. We cut the beaks off of hens. We rip the testicles out of baby pigs when they're born. We have treated our cousins in fur and feathers so horribly that beyond a doubt, if they ever formed an organized religion, the devil would be depicted in human form. Noted scholar Dr. Stephen Best said that the vegan movement threatens people because it is a direct attack on the power of humans and demands deconstruction of the insanity that has become the absolute sovereignty humans have claimed over all other life forms. Animals do not belong to us. They are not commodities. They're not property and they're not inanimate stupid objects who can't think and feel. That Descartes Cartesian way of looking at animals like they're machines, it is outdated and quite frankly, 100% insane. The truth, justice and equality, which is at the crux of the vegan movement, will continue to campaign against speciesism. And the country leading the way is Israel. <laughs>